If you don't know who I am, my name is Sharice, and I am the CEO and founder of Wear Your Confidence. And tonight we are in for a treat. We have a mother-daughter duo, and I am super excited to be sharing this night, this platform with the one and only Ms. Tyra and her beautiful daughter. Don't do that. <laughs> And her beautiful daughter is with us, Tamani. Just want to welcome you all. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. And so just a quick, a quick, a quick um, intro. I'll do a quick one and then you can do the formal one. Okay. Um, so Miss Tyra is a mother of six. She is a holistic lifestyle coach and author of the book called Purposeful Parenting. She cooks, she exercises, she is a wife. She wears several hats. Did I cover everything? Did I miss something? Pretty much. Oh, I'm also a ministry leader at my church. And a ministry leader. Awesome. So if you could just talk a little bit more about what it is that you do, like the holistic lifestyle coach. Can you talk about that before we get into this everything? Sure. So essentially what I help people do is what it says on this shirt, living fully. So I help people to live fully in the mind, in the body, and in the spirit because holistic health is a multi-pronged approach. And some people do well at meeting one of those areas or even two, but in order for us to live fully, we've got to address all three, the mind, the body, and the spirit. So what I do is I give women practical strategies on how they can live fully. I love it. Awesome. That's very important, especially as a mom and yeah. just what women do, period. Being yeah. able to balance all of that, you know, and not give too much attention to one thing and then neglect another part of who we are. So exactly. it's really good. Awesome. And then um, your daughter, Tamani, how old are you? I'm 16. 16. That's a beautiful age. I don't remember much about being 16, but <laughs> so what is it that you do? Tell me a little bit about yourself, even though like we're in quarantine, if this wasn't happening, what activities would you be involved in? Um, I'm really interested in music, so, you know, I'm always fiddling around on some piano or guitar or drums, and um, I'm in a jazz band for a flute, so I hate school. I would play that. Um, I'm also interested in a lot of sports, you know, I'm always active or running around somewhere and playing ultimate frisbee or something, or <laughs> tennis, um, or, you know, messing with my little brothers as to work out. Um, yeah, that's basically me. Um, I'm also, I also like science a lot. So if I'm doing, you know, a little experiment or dissection of a worm, then uh, that's where I'll be. Nice. I like so it. I also like science a lot. So if I'm doing. So we little... have here like a double, triple combo beauty, brains, and talent. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so the whole purpose of us here tonight was we're. This is the confidence corner. So we're talking about confident moms raising a confident daughters. So Tyra, could you talk to us a little bit about your confidence journey? It's a journey because, you know, we don't just get the tools and say, oh yes, I'm confident and I'm just gonna take over the world, you know? It's, we're, we're constantly evolving. So can you talk a little bit about your journey and how you, um, instilled or tried to instill confidence in your daughter? Yes. Well, my confidence journey starts with being picked on as a kid. Um, I can remember the things that eroded my confidence. Um, and that was boys teasing me. I always got teased about these lips. Okay. Um, I always got teased about these teeth. So <laughs> for as long as I could remember, those things eroded up in my, at my confidence. Um, my father, though, when I was a teen, gave me opportunities to build on my strengths. 
And two things that I have always done since I was a little girl was write and speak. And mm -hmm. so when my father gave me opportunities to build those, that helped me to build my confidence. And then when I was in college in my early adulthood, I really began to embrace and know that the confidence wasn't just these external, you know, trappings. It wasn't just what I looked like, but it was those things that intrinsically I was gifted in. And when I operated in those, then I felt confident. Then when I had children, so I have two girls um, and I also raised my sister. So I've, I've had some experience in okay. to try to instill confidence in young women. And so with my daughter, one of the biggest things I've tried to share with her was just do your best. Um, my daughter's natural nature kind of bends toward her questioning what people think about her, right? And I'm like, just do your best. It doesn't matter what people think about you. Right. You do your personal best. So, you know, I've tried to help her in that way. And, and then by giving her opportunities to delve into those things that she's naturally gifted in. My husband and I have created space for all of our children to operate in their unique gifting. And I think that when young people operate in their unique gifting, that that's a great way to build confidence. Agree. I agree too. And when you first started, when you said that, you know, um, you were able to trace back where the issue started with the yeah. daggone boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I don't know, can you relate to that, Tamani? Have, where has your um, confidence journey began? or lack of confidence or where have you noticed like, okay, this is where I need to be more confident in? Um, around seventh grade, you know, other than, there was the boy situation, but um, you know, I would look at all the other girls and as a very self-conscious person, I would be like, oh, if I don't look like, you know, so-and-so popular girls and then I, then I don't have a place. And, you know, it took me some time I'm definitely more confident now, but back then it just struggle. It was a struggle. Like I remember um, the girls would do this thing where they would sit down, right? And you would measure like the size of your thighs. And I would be like wow. a little bit bigger than other people's. And mm -hmm. I mean, like, yeah, it was, it was weird. So. And girls can be so cruel as well. I know with me when my journey started when I was junior high school, going into high school. Like my feet are big. Like I can't do anything about it. I wear size 11 and I wasn't as tall as I am now as I was back then. And I was wearing boots and I'll never forget the short little boy in the class pointed to me like I was sitting in the front row and he's like what are those like your feet are so big I'm just like oh my gosh why are you doing this right now and from that point I was like okay I am not wearing I'm not wearing boots I'm not wearing any type of shorts or capris capris were in back then I was like I'm not doing it because I don't want anyone to see my feet mm -hmm. and then when I got older like the girls started teasing me because my chest was small still small <laughs> I'm like I can't do anything about it but just those points where it's like okay I can't do anything about this so I have to accept it I have to accept the fact that I have big feet and now I don't care like I'll wear flip-flops I'll wear the boots I'm like listen the shoes are so cute when they're small when they get to my size it is what it is and I'm just gonna rock it I don't I don't care anymore <laughs> um but Tyra, going back to you, when you said that you had your dad there to help instill that, what are some things that you have like said or done um, with either Tamani or your other children to help them, you know, accept themselves or accept anything that they don't like about themselves? Well, one, as I mentioned before, was the just do your best. As long as you're doing your personal best, nobody can take that away from you. Uh, then we also said giving room and space to grow in your unique gifting. So I think that, um, you know, one key with parenting 
is for parents to understand their children, to be students of their children, to get to know their children so that they can then know what their gifts are, you know, their natural gifts and inclinations, and then to give them space, to give them room to develop. Um, also, our words that we use are very, very powerful. So parents have to be mindful of the words that we use with our children. So I think just being strategic in identifying their gifts, using words that, that build them up, and um, and in and us too displaying, you know, a sense of confidence in who we are. Let them see us taking risks, right? Whether it is um, in a workplace, in business, maybe a mom is even pursuing, you know, her education at an older age. So if our children see that we're confident, that we're going after things, they say in the home that more is caught than taught. So yeah. I think, um, you know, kind of walking it by example as well. I agree. I agree. I was going to ask you about that too. Things being caught rather than being taught. And you see that a lot, especially with the young girls that I come in contact with. They'll say, oh, um, I don't like how my body looks. And I'm like, where did you get that from? And then you talk to their mom and you hear how their mom talks and their body issues. And I'm like, oh, that's where they got it from. And so you had mentioned something, um, spending time and getting to know your daughter. We are in quarantine. This is the perfect time and opportunity to get to know your daughter. Tamani's like, oh my gosh, yeah, this is perfect. All right. <laughs> so what are some things that you have been doing like as a mother daughter duo or anything like just to get to know each other more? I don't know if that's something that you guys have already done, but I don't know. Maybe you could give some advice or some tips yes. of things that you guys can do to like bond that doesn't seem like a task. Right, right. Well, I will have to give the credit to my daughter here. I have to give her all the credit. She makes it easy for me to develop a relationship with her. I know that there are mothers who may struggle with their teenage daughters, but um, one, I'm here to rewrite the narrative, you know, these things that people say about teenage girls, whether they're sassy, attitudinal, hormonal, I'm here to rewrite the narrative. My teen girl is awesome. And the way that she makes it easy for me is she opens herself up to engage with me. So she'll say, hey, mommy, let's watch a show together. Now, I don't usually watch TV. Like, I'm not a TV person. But because she has approached me in that way, then it's like, okay, let's watch this show. So she's got me binge watching a show, right? And, and that's not about my personality type to binge watch a show, but it's our time together. It's our little thing, right? And it's our special time. Um, she invites me, you know, she tells me, mommy, I'm going to invite you in on this tea. So, you know, she'll tell me something maybe of what's going on with friends or what's going on in the news. And again, she's inviting me into her world. So I, I just love it. And rarely, Every now and again, she'll invite me to do a TikTok with her. Get out! Look at that! She's the boss. <laughs> I gotta give it to her. She's the boss. That is awesome. So you're dancing, Tyra? You're dancing in the... <laughs> well, see, she don't know me back in the day. She don't know me back in the day. So really, I'm just tapping into some of my old self that used to be dancing. Okay. But really, in the TikToks, I'm not so much dancing as just making like a little cameo. Gotcha. That's cute. I like that. It That's is cute. That is cute. Because a lot of times kids, when I talk to the young girls that I do um, interact with, they're like, I'm in one room. I'm on my phone. The lights are off. I'm watching movies all day. I'm like, what are you? That's all you're doing? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, no, Bonnie's creeping in my space talking about some, hey girl, what are you? <laughs> Don't you? And I think it's so cute. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> so then, Tamani, how is it that you're so, is that just your personality or has your mom made it so that it's easy to talk to her? Um, it's definitely both. Uh, my, my mom's a very like open person. So if I say something, she's going to listen. And I like that because I don't like when people talk over me. Um, and also that's just my personality. I'm just like, I just want to talk to whoever. Got it. Nice. We were talking about personalities last week 
with Karen mm -hmm. and we were talking about how different personalities, some are just naturally inclined to want to be by themselves or some are just naturally inclined to just be negative. Um, but Tamani is like, awesome. You're like a social butterfly. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's a beautiful. So then since it seems like you guys have a good cohesive relationship, Tamani, you're able to talk to your mom about anything. Yeah. How, how did you, or how would you, um, what advice would you give to, let's say, either a teen mom, a, a mom who has a teen, sorry, or a, a teenager herself who has a difficult time trying to have those, you know, hard conversations with her mom? What advice would you give? Um, I think for, I guess, both sides, it's... I think it's the job of the mom to be there for their daughter. So no matter what it is, just in that moment, it's important for them to be like, it's okay, I got you, sis, you know? Because if not, then that breaks one barrier. And there's already, you know, so many things you can break between a relationship before, you know, you're completely separated. And you want to keep that bond strong because then what if something, you know, happens where they have to intrude, then it's going to be hard for you to speak. Mm -hmm. So you can just start with like little things and then, you know. You said start with little things. What would you consider a little thing? You know, just like telling T about like your friends or just like sitting and talking about, you know, how your mom is doing or how you're doing. Nice. I like it. And then Tyra, like what, what are some, how would you, um, what advice would you give to a mom who's struggling to have conversations with their daughter? Cause you know, it's so, we're so used to what we're used to. So us not talking, us walking by each other, not having dinner at the table, we're used to that. But now we're in the house with each other 24 seven. It's like, okay, I have a teenager. What am I supposed like? What are we talking about here? <laughs> like, so, like, what advice would you give them to start that conversation? To start a conversation? I would say you have to meet the person where they are and on their terms. So, spark a conversation on something that the child is interested in. Naturally, I want to talk about the things I want to talk about. I want to talk about my faith. I want to talk about food. I want to talk about fitness. I want to talk about, you know, why your room looks hot looks, you know, all the <laughs> 900 other things that as a mama, I want to talk about, right? But I have to put that to the side sometimes. Oh, and just do something radical, right? Like this, do this radical thing. Your daughter is in her room, holed up in there, just boxed in the room for hours on her phone. Just go sit on her bed and say, hey, girl. <laughs> I mean, what, like, tickle her. You know, just do something completely random and completely foolish. You know, just sit down. So who are we talking to? So what are you doing? You know, <laughs> I get my girl's face. I like to bother them. I like to tease them. For me, you know, it's fun. It breaks the ice. Um, also, maybe just treat them to something. So like one little thing. I know my girl likes kombucha, right? Now, normally I'm a, you only drink water kind of person or like natural teas with no sweetener. Mm -hmm. But kombucha is her thing, right? So then I'm going to bring her her kombucha, you know? So she might text me to bring her her kombucha. I might even respond something like, oh, you only want to text me when you want something. <laughs> Guess what? Guess who's bringing the kombucha, right? Because this is one kind of simple thing, right? But I know it's her special thing. And especially during this quarantine time, like as a mom, I wanna support whatever she's going through and whatever's gonna help her mentally, emotionally and socially, like work through this thing. So if you need your kombucha, fine. If you need extra treats, there's this like really unhealthy treat she likes. <laughs> the mom in me and the wellness coach in me is like, absolutely not. But I've been bringing her this other little special treat. It's so ratchet. I don't even want to say what this. What is it? You want to tell them what your other no. special treat is? Um, I, I'm quite the fiend for hot Cheetos. 
hot Cheetos. Oh. I was looking for hot Cheetos the other day. <laughs> it's, it's bad. It's horrible. It is. It's it's bad. It's gonna give me anxiety right now, even thinking about my child eating that. I. You gotta get the small bag. This the small. Needless to say, I have supplied a bag or two because I know my girl needs this help. So meeting the children where oh, they are on their terms, small little things, you know, walk into their room, crack a joke, you know, something to break the ice, but go into their world, go into their space on their terms, right? And not just with the mommy telling you what to do. Right. So actually having a conversation and not talking at them about what it is that you want to talk about right. for getting into their world. I like that. That's some good stuff. Good stuff right there. And so then um, let's transition. Um, our topic is not just about confidence, but also fairness and balance. What advice, um, Tyra, would you give to moms who are trying to balance everything? Being a mom, being a wife, working, being an entrepreneur, trying to stay fit, taking care of yourself. Like how? Help the moms. <laughs> Well, um, I think that we've been sold a bill of goods on what balance is. You mm -hmm. know, the way the world portrays balance is that we have everything in our hands all at once and we're doing them all effectively all at one time. And, and I think that's a somewhat flawed mm -hmm. kind of point of view. You know what I mean? So I think we have to kind of reframe even what we think balance is. I think moms need to grant themselves some grace. And I'm going to say, listen, girlfriend, you're doing a great job. Okay. You're doing the best you can. I mean, sometimes you're giving all you have. Grant yourself some grace. You're doing a great job. Now, strategy. How do we actually achieve a measure of, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even want to use the word balance here. Um, how, do, how do we achieve a, a measure of um, healthy living, of living fully, right? In, in all these areas. Well, how do you eat an elephant? They say you eat it one bite at a time. So, you know, you just do one little thing, which is honoring to you, honoring to your family and honoring to your commitments. You can't do them all at once. You can't do them all at once. It's not realistic, it's not realistic. How do I find specifically um, balance in those areas or some semblance of balance? I've been doing it a long time. So I've developed routines and processes that work for me because I've been at it a long time. And it starts with kind of just centering myself with knowing the things that I need to do for me so that I can be best for all these people. Uh -huh. For me eating right, for me praying, for me exercising, those help me be better so that then I can meet all those other demands. Awesome, awesome. I like, I like what you said. That's so true, so true. And then Tamani, as you see your mom balance and do all of that, has there ever been a time where you felt like, okay, um, I need some attention. Attention me, mom. Hello. Um, yeah, a bit, you know, with the, the whole like brand stuff that she has to keep up. And then she's like managing five other children other than me. Sometimes I'm like, wait, I want to talk about this. And then it's like, oh, wait, this, it's not my place right now. So I feel kind of left out. Um, I mean, she does a good job is, of getting to me as much as she can. And, you know, I'm grateful for that. It's just sometimes I get a little selfish and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. Awesome. So then um, as far as social media let's talk about social media and how that affects your confidence and self-esteem being as though we are in quarantine right now i feel like everyone every youth every young person is on their phone on snap on instagram and tiktok i just got a tiktok myself and like everyone is on there from the youngest to like seven years old to the eldest, we have grandmas and grandpas on there. How has social media played an effect on how you view yourself, your confidence and self-esteem? 
or has it? Is this for me or Tamani? For Tamani. Um, so I personally, I think that it's kind of an outlet because, you know, we're sitting here in quarantine and, you know, there's nothing else to do. Why don't I just, you know, make a TikTok and show mm -hmm. what new song I made or, you know, text one of my friends, hey, check out this, you know, um, or, you know, send my friends pictures of myself. So I think it's a good outlet for creativity because um, when you're not in, when we weren't in quarantine, I was able to do more of that, uh, well, express more of that uh, in real life. But I guess I can't do that anymore for right now. So. For the time being. <laughs> Understood. Okay. So you use social media more as an outlet for your talent. Do you, do you ever find yourself getting caught up in the different images of, you know, celebrities or just other people? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's hard to say, I can't lie. I mean, I've had some issues when I look at other TikTokers and I'm like, well, look at how many followers they have, or, you know, look how popular this girl got her on her Insta. Like, I have to take some time and reassess but you know at the end of the day i'm like it's it's me i'm not i'm not them you know so i just gotta accept it and you know do what i do awesome i like what you said it's not me you're right and even as um myself a young adult and even adults adult women we go through that where we see other people and we compare looks, likes, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just reminded, you know, of what Tyra said in the beginning of the conversation, like you have to basically, you know, stay in your lane, stay focused on what it is that you have. You can only do what you can do, like do your best. Those were your words, do your best, do the best that you can do. And it's so, it's easier said than done at times <clears throat> especially if you haven't come from a place or you don't have that relationship like you do with your mom where that's not something that has been instilled in you you know what I mean so I'm just so happy that we I have you two here to show people that it can be done you can have a successful relationship with your daughter, where your daughter likes you in her teenage years, <laughs> where she wants to talk to you and you guys can actually communicate. Um, and it's not to say that you guys don't have your disagreements and things like that, but the fact that you guys um, or you ladies have that communication, you have that space where you can talk to one another. It's a beautiful thing to me. It is. And um, I think we have fun together. I love <laughs> teasing her. My um, children say that I'm cringy. So I love doing cringy things to embarrass them. I love dancing in front of them. They think it's the worst ever. I love um, picking with them. I just love it. I just love it. <laughs> they laugh at me. And I know they're laughing at me. And they're talking about me in the background. And I love that. <laughs> to me, it just draws us closer together. Nice. And it's good when you can laugh together. Yes. So, you know, they say laughter is the best of medicine. And when you can just be yourself, let your hair down and enjoy each other's company. That's a beautiful thing, too. Beautiful, beautiful thing. So as we wrap up, um, Tyra, how can the people get in contact with you? Wonderful. Thank you. Well, I invite all of our viewers to come on over to the Inspired Life page here on Facebook. It's at Inspired Fully, where we are inspiring hearts to live fully in the mind and the body and in the spirit. They can also find me on Instagram at Inspired Fully. Also on my website at www.inspiredtolivefully.com. Dot com And Tamani actually works with me. She is one of, I have a team of four and she's actually on my team 
And so I'm honored to have her even working with me in that capacity. So, you know, it's... <laughs> I know that's right. I ain't mad at you. Get that money, girl. <laughs> Honor. And, and she she's she's a great partner too. She really, really is. She's responsible. She does what she needs to do. She does it with a good attitude, with enthusiasm. So I appreciate her. So that's another way that mothers and daughters can bond. You know, that what we have going on as women, they're not just spectators to what we're doing you know, but look for opportunities to engage them and let them participate. So it's a family affair. I love it. I love it. And then Tamani, let the people know how they can get in contact with you. We have some young girls that are watching. They'll be watching <laughs> the replay as well. So I want to see some of your talents, my dear. So let us know, how can we get in contact with you? Uh, my TikTok, I'll give that. My TikTok is Bobani Fofani. <laughs> Wait, say that again. At Bobani Fofani. Bobani Fofani. Yes. I'm going to write that down. Spell <laughs> it for me. She says spell it. B O B A N I F O F A N I. All right. I'm going to look you up tonight. Okay. And she's quite the musician. Okay. She She's kind of playing it low key tonight. <laughs> but the girl does vocals, flute. Oh, drums, piano, guitar. She's she's being humble. Oh, oh, okay. I like it. And that all of you, um, playing on that those instruments are they all on your TikTok? You get a sample um, of all of that. I mean, I could upload some. Most of them I just send personally to my friends, but I guess I could. Put okay. Hey, I love it. I love it. I, um, again, I just want to thank you. Thank you so much for joining this girl talk. Thank you for having us. Yes, it was a pleasure. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm guaranteed that you have helped a mother daughter tonight. Just by opening, opening the door, like literally opening the door to their room and into their life just to start just to start talking and getting right. to know each other. Yep. Beautiful. So thank you again. And thank you all for watching, for tuning in. We will be back next week. Um, share the stream, share the replay. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you both so much. And as always, ladies, don't forget your confidence. Have a good night.